It says, How thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. So another reason for the church to exist is to be a pillar of truth. And what do I mean by a pillar of truth? It means a place where the truth and the word of God is exalted and it is made known and it's manifest. Because what's a pillar? A pillar is something that holds the roof up. It holds the truth up. So it is a pillar to the truth. And you might say, well, isn't, isn't the church meant to be a place where Jesus Christ is exalted? Well, the Bible says in John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus Christ is the Word of God, so when we exalt the Word of God, we are exalting Jesus Christ. And don't ask me how that works. I don't know exactly how that works, how the words of the Bible are Jesus Christ. And we're not talking about the ink. You know, We're not talking about the pixels on this screen here that are Jesus Christ. But we're saying that these pixels or the ink on a page are uh, in a certain pattern to create words and we read those words and somehow those words are Jesus Christ and it was those words the Bible says that were made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth so Jesus Christ is the Word of God that's the third part in the Trinity we have the Father the Word and the Holy Ghost and these three are one and it's the Word that became flesh and that's the Son of God that's Jesus Christ I don't know how that works, but you know Jesus Christ is the Word of God, and Jesus Christ is who is exalted. He is the truth. The Bible says the Word of God is truth, and that is what the church, one of the things the church is meant to be. It's meant to be a pillar of truth, to uphold the truth and exalt the truth. You know, this is why I wanted a significant amount of Bible reading. When we come together as a church, we read the Bible together as a church because that's one thing the church is meant to be. It's meant to be a pillar of truth and to uphold the Word of God. John 17 verse 14. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Now, the point I wanted to make here was, you know, Jesus said to his disciples that his disciples were not of the world. He gave his disciples his word and the world was going to hate them. So when we are, as believers are out in the world, sometimes the world will hate us. The world will hate us for the positions that we take. The world will think that we're weird, right? The world will think that God's word is an abomination. But see, this should not be the case in the house of God. See, the house of God is a pillar of truth. So when you come to the house of God as a zealous Bible-believing Christian, Bible -believing Christian, this is where you should feel at home, right? This is where you should feel at home to talk about Bible doctrine, to talk about the Bible, to exalt Jesus Christ, to, to want to you know, excel in your Christian life. You know, God forbid that the day would come where you come to this church and you feel out of place as a zealous Bible-believing Christian. And this is why, you know, I encourage, you know, discussion. And I say this to you guys all the time, that I just encourage Bible-believing discussion because, you know, let's say you hear something out in the world or you hear some false doctrine or even something that you, uh, is new to you and you didn't know maybe that was in the Word of God, you ought to have the frame of mind of, hey, man, that's great. I, I want to go to church and talk about it with people and see what people think. You shouldn't have this... You know, how sad is it when you believe something or you see something in the Word of God and your first thought might be, oh man, I can't talk about this at my church. You know, I can't talk about this in the house of God. Um, you know, that's, that's just sad because the house of God is meant to be a pillar of truth where the Word of God is exalted and the Word of God is the main focus here. So you should be able to come to a church like this as a zealous Christian and this is where you feel normal. You know, and this is why I love church because, you know, sometimes out in the world or at, at my workplace, I do feel out of place. You know, I don't always get along with everyone at work because I don't necessarily want to talk about and joke about the things that they talk about and joke about. But when I come here, it's people that love God, it's people that love soul winning, it's people that love the truth, and we want to sharpen and strengthen one another. And it's great to come together and talk and discuss and grow and encourage one another in the work of God. 
All right, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heed to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. So the word of God says here in 2 Timothy chapter 4 to preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season. So we preach the word, whether it's in season, whether it's popular and it's the thing that everyone believes, or whether it's out of season, it's no longer popular, whether it's labeled as hate speech in the house of God, this is where you ought to be able to come to hear the truth that is not taught anywhere else in the world. So the Bible says here, preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So even though in the world, the truth of God is gone and nobody is believing it anymore, you ought to be able to come to the house of God, which is a pillar of truth and hear the truth that is taught in the house of God. Uh, let's look at uh, 2 Corinthians 10. says here, Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, so though we live in this world, we do not war after the flesh. So we're not trying to wage a physical war or resist things in a physical way we do not war after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds so our, our weapon like in ephesians is the word of god we use the word of god to fight the spiritual war for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that it exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And the point I wanted to make here in this verse is, you know, yes, church ought to be a pillar of truth. So it is somewhere where the truth is exalted, but not only do we build up and exalt the truth, but we need to tear down false things we need to tear down lies and we need to tear down heresies so not only do we use not only are we in a, in a war to edify and build up the truth but we are in a war to destroy lies and destroy things that are false also and and just i wanted to just cover a couple of examples but for example you know in church you'll hear that salvation is by faith but will you necessarily hear that salvation is not by works, that it's not by you know, giving your life to Jesus, it's not by you know, turning away from your sins or repenting of your sins? And you know, when you come to the house of God, you ought to hear these things. Not just hear that salvation is by grace, salvation is by faith, but that it's not repent of your sins. You know, repenting of your sins is works. Repenting of your sins is keeping the commandments. Repenting of your sins is heresy. It's false doctrine. And you might say, Victor, why do you keep saying it? Because I love hearing it in the house of God. Because you go to you know, other places, you don't hear this sort of preaching. You don't hear it clearly said what is wrong and what is right. You might hear, hey, you know, it's not of works, so lest any man should boast, quoting that passage. But then they may not clearly say, well, you know, people that are saying you need to turn from your sins, that's works. That's heresy. That is a false gospel that we need to expose. You know, we, we, we uphold, we're a pillar of truth, so we uphold the King James Bible. But not only do we uphold the King James Bible, but we need to tear down the other Bibles. We need to say that the NIV is a false Bible, that it's missing verses, that it's changing the Word of God, the, the New International Version, the New American Standard. All these new Bibles that are coming out are perverting the Word of God. You know, the pillar of truth ought to encourage you to be fruitful and multiply. 
to have children, to love children, to value children, to spend time with your children, to, to teach your children. And the pillar of truth, the house of God ought to say to you that abortion is murder, that abortion is wrong, it's an abomination, and people that are killing their own children are doing something wicked. You know, you know, like, uh, like uh, what's happening in the media these days. I don't know if you guys heard that the US um, changed. I don't know if you saw that on your Facebook. But you know, the world, you know, it's probably coming soon to Australia. You know, to be honest, I don't even know what it's going to change. You know, because so, you know, they, they've already allowed homosexuality in our society. They already allow homosexuality to, to exist in our society. Um, so what they do, uh, what is that going to change, whether they can marry or not? I mean, maybe it, it may change the culture, it may change what people who are on the fence may think about it. But you've got to remember that when laws change, laws do not actually change the society. Because that's what people are saying. They're saying, oh, we can't pass you know, this gay marriage, or we can't let gays marry because it's going to affect the culture. I mean, what they don't realize is the reason why gay marriage has passed is because the culture has changed. The culture has changed and that's why people are accepting of gay marriage and we have to change the culture. The laws are just a reflection uh, of the culture. But you know, in the house of God, you know, the world may accept gay marriage and the world may accept this perverted relationship of a man and a man or a man and an animal or two men and, t and one woman or two women and one man and it's marriage. They can redefine marriage however they want. But when you come to the house of God, marriage is always going to be one man and one woman as long as I'm the bishop of this church and as long as the Bible is the word of God and, it, and it's never going to change. So the marriage is always going to be a man and a woman. Because if we, if we don't define marriage as a man and a woman as the Bible defines it, then what, then, then why, what is marriage? You know, why do they even call it marriage? You know, like they, they just want to take a concept that God has created and pervert it. Because, you know, if they, they can do, do whatever they want. If they want to you know, go, go, go ahead and you know, sleep with an animal or marry your cat or marry your dog and call it marriage, it's not going to be marriage. Just like uh, marrying a, a man or a man and a man and a man and a woman. And you know, this, this propaganda that they put out, you know, whenever you see gay marriage, it's always just this clean picture of two men or two women hugging. But that's not what it is. You know, because when you come down to it, sodomy is something that's unnatural. Sodomy is something that's disgusting. I mean, it's putting something into a hole that the, the weight, your, your, your body waste is trying to expel. I mean, it's, it's disgusting. I mean, this is the true reality of homosexual marriage. This is what they want to do. It's not just that they want to hang out and be friends because they can do that without being married. It's that they, that they want us to accept this disgusting act as something that is normal. But in the house of God, it will never be accepted as normal. You know, we, we believe that creation is in six days and the, and the earth is a young earth. So when you come to the house of God, this is what you're going to hear. and This is what people are going to believe. And we're going to say that, you know, evolution is wrong. And not only that, that God didn't do evolution. It wasn't the day age theory or the, uh, or the uh, what else is there, the gap theory and all these other theories where Christians have compromised on the truth. You know, we say that baptism is by immersion. But not only that, we say that sprinkling is not the way to baptize. So see, we don't only build up the truth, but we also tear down what is false. And we say, you know, the Catholics and the Presbyterians and the Methodists and all these people Actually, I don't know whether the method is actually baptized by sprinkling. I think they do. But, um, you know, all these other denominations that are baptizing by sprinkling are not following uh, what the Bible says. And I mentioned one in the beginning where church leaders should be men and not women. So it's not just that we teach what a church leader should be, but we also address what is uh, not right. You know, the fact that the tribulation is before the rapture. Sorry, I'm just confusing myself. So, you know, we believe in a, a post-tribulation rapture uh, and not a pre-tribulation rapture. Um, you know, we, we, we don't just say that, you know, whosoever will is saved, but the fact that Calvinism is false. Uh, and, you know, we expo expose the false religion. So the point I'm trying to make here is that we don't just build up the truth, but we also need to addre address the misconceptions that are out there and teach people uh, what is false. And that is what a lot of churches are not doing. All right, last passage I just want to turn to here. 
is in Romans 16. He says here, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offences contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. So we see here that not only is the church meant to be an atmosphere of godliness and righteousness, but also an atmosphere of spiritual truth and true doctrine. Um, it says here, For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. And I just want to make that distinction again in verse 17, where it says, We mark them which cause divisions and offences, contrary to the doctrine which he have learned. So it's, it's not just people that are causing division, because sometimes truth will cause division in a church. But it's truth that is causing, it's, it's divisions and offences that are caused from doctrines that are contrary to the things that are taught in the Word of God. Doctrine that is taught in the Word of God, not doctrine that is taught by a man. Because you can have man-made doctrines and sometimes people have divisions and, and offences that are you know, caused by that. And that's fine. You know, you know, if, there, if, there, if the dispute and discussion about certain preferences, hey, you know, have at it and talk about it and discuss it and let's come to an agreement. But when people are trying to promote false doctrine within the church that is contrary to the Word of God, that's not something we can allow in this church because we want... You know, we want this church to be a place of truth um, and, we, and we want people to talk about it. So it's, it's not wrong to talk about it, but it's just wrong to cause divisions and offences to do wrong by people contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. 